you have to add apples, organic apples to your diet. If yes. you can't chew an apple, then uh, make applesauce. Right. But apples help to heal the myelin sheath, which is the coating around your nerves that has been damaged from one thing or another. Everybody, welcome to HealingALS.org. This is a Sunday community meeting, but we are now in the boot camp phase of our meeting. Our basic boot camp is a four-part series. Welcome. Uh, we're very excited to have everyone here. Um, part one is just the basics, diet and supplements. Uh, gut function is included in there as well. Environmental toxins and detox will be next week, so do not miss it. It's going to be fantastic. Um, your thoughts, there is an incredible amount of um, science on the thoughts and how your thoughts affect physical healing. This is so important. I cannot stress it enough. Every single one of the reversals that we have studied, the thoughts made a big difference. A big difference, and we're going to cover that in part three. Part four is how to do your own research and how to find and work with medical professionals. We understand we cannot cover all of functional medicine and ALS in four weeks. We will have an advanced boot camp in February. So this is fantastic. Um, there is some supplemental material to boot camp. If you have not been on every Sunday, please log in as a member. All of the recordings are free. Click on the button that says Sunday recordings. In addition, we are super pleased to announce that the Healing ALS conference recordings are now out from 2019, but they are wonderful. So use them as amazingly well put together information and you can pick the talks that you want that day. The proceeds of any sales go to bringing the PALS, the ALS community, all of this information for free. The advanced boot camp is going to be free. This boot camp is free. And a local Rotary from the Netherlands donated the money um, for these four weeks of boot camp. So understand everything we do costs money. It's not free. I wish it was, but it's not. And it takes a lot of time and a lot of effort to put this together. So um, the recordings are available on healingals.org just below this picture that you're going to see on the right. Just click on the click on the um, click on the link to purchase. It's very reasonable and it helps support what we're doing. So I do want to thank you. These um, little logos don't just appear out of nowhere. Uh, Steve R. Scott. <laughs> It's one of our volunteers. He was diagnosed in 2013. He did the graphics for the conference. Okay. He did the graphics for the boot camp. He did. So he's just amazing. And he does all this with one finger and he hasn't reversed yet, but believe me, he will. Uh, Pinnacan Shop from India. He's also a PALS a diagnosed in 2018. He led the social media for the group boot camp. So I wanted to thank him especially. Um, and, you know, just our core teams, Brian um, runs the mastermind group, uh, Kim and Kay, Lisa, Mark, Manchester, Brian and Lisa, Tabitha, Kim, um, all help medical advisors. I mean, we could not do what we did without our volunteers. Um, another set of volunteers are our moderators, very key. Marcel also leads our volunteer meetings, and so does Gabby Fay. They're co-leaders of our volunteers. Julie is head of our mind-body committee. I mean, it's just, I could go on and on and on, but understand that this takes uh, time and effort, and a lot of people are helping. Um, we have a couple people in Italy that are amazing, Massey and and. Uh, and uh, Paula. And so you know, again, we just got just beautiful Smita in, in um, England. We just, you know, we have people from just all these different countries and everybody's helping. So just thank you to that group. Um, I'm now going to introduce uh, Kim and Kay Cherry. <laughs> um, Kay was diagnosed in 2011. You guys have seen their picture all over the place. Um, Bedlock uh, is Bed Dr. Bedlock's reversal number 24. Their story is on ALSwinners.com. Please go and visit that website. Um, 
back in 2011, he was having trouble even just walking across the room. He needed oxygen. He was finally diagnosed in December, November of 2011 with Bulba and given a year to live. And understand, they jumped on this. This is what one of the keys, you have to jump on it. You have to take it seriously. Two weeks later, somebody recommended a, 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 a functional chiropractor and they drove six hours to see him. So, and Kim was extremely skeptical, <laughs> but they started a diet and supplement program and they noticed improvement. So, you know, then they start reading books, change the diet some more. She start, they start essential oils. Um, four months later, they drive to Tennessee all the way from Idaho. That's a long ways. I don't know exactly how long. But again, this takes commitment. They did ozone therapy, hyperbarics, tinctures, vitamins, herbs, probiotic enzymes, all this stuff. They have consulted with holistic doctors. This is a journey, okay? They made adjustments as they researched and more, and they're still making adjustments today. If you ask Kim and Kay, how much was it their doctors and how much was it them? 90% was Kim and Kay and their own research and their own work and their own applications. 10% was various doctors. So in the past nine years, they've seen the neurologist three times, functional chiropractor three times, naturopath for a whole week, a functional MD once and another functional MD three times. Okay. And it's this method of working with the doctors when they need it, getting their advice from the doctors. Everyone is different. Some of you are going to need to see your functional medical doctor once a week, once a month for five, for five years. That's fine. Whatever works for you. But what they're working, what they found was working for them is they went to the doctors when they needed it and they did a lot of research. And the result is in 2020, Kim is still golfing. So forgot, put the picture up. <laughs> okay, so um, Kay, uh, you are now taking over the floor. <laughs> uh, Kay right. Cherry is uh, running, she is a cow, so she is Kim Cherry's wife. And Kim and Kay would tell you both, Kim would tell you, um, I would not be healing. Hopefully Kim can come on and say hi, right Kay? Is he able to come in and say hi? He, he could, but I don't know what he's doing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, so if you can get him later to say hi, we'll do what do on the Q and A. But the main thing is that Kim would tell you that if it weren't for Kay, he wouldn't be healing. But also if it weren't for Kim, he wouldn't be healing because he was, this is a very much of a, a pals cals partnership. He didn't just let Kay, Kay all do the work. He has done a ton of work himself. He has done a ton of research. He's the one that pricked himself with the ozone. He's the one that did, you know, he's done a huge amount. So don't think this is all Kim, just because Kim's giving the presentation. Okay, Kim, go ahead. Hey. I'm Kay, he's Kim. But Kay, it's I'm very, sorry. very easy. <laughs> and it's only been going on for 50 years, so we're good. Um, here are some in the picture are some real reversals. Build belief is the first piece. As a professor. She is now a victim of ALS, or Lou Gehrig's disease. And after watching NBC News coverage of the AIDS crisis, she wrote us a letter, punching computer keys with a stick held in her mouth. I was in a wheelchair. Uh, I had fallen. Uh, one, I think one time I, I really fell, and it is so scary. You have no control. You don't have any control to pick your, to catch yourself even, you're, you're just limp. And so um, I told Glenn, I didn't want to get out of the wheelchair again. They got mountain climbing gear and they put the pulley onto the cable. They put me into the mountain climbing gear and then I wouldn't fall because that would hold me. And so then I, would try with the walker to walk and that, I mean, just standing. I think meditation has a lot to do with it um, to get your mind into a better place. Um, and just imagine you doing 
what you want to do. Even though you can't do it, imagine you doing it. Probably eight, nine months into it, he thought I was, ALS was gone, but it was just what I'd have to do to get my strength back and my muscles working again. I do everything. Um, you know, I clean the house and I do the meals. I go out and pull the weeds and I do the, um, we have a fireplace. So I help with the wood and I stack the wood and help split it. And, um, it's just amazing. I shoot and edit all of our videos. And so we spent a good day with them there all day and they are wonderful. And it's all of the little things that she's done. And she's pretty much did it with her mind and she did it without medical professionals. Very, her story is very impressive. Okay. Thank you. So the main thing is that these reversals are real. Uh, this is, we're gonna show a few reversals each week so that, you know, you don't, we're not gonna just show them all at once, all at once. So this is Mark Manchester. Those of you that he was on a trach, he was on a feeding tube. He could not speak, eat, breathe, walk. Okay, he couldn't even drive his electric wheelchair for a while. So three years, he was on a trach. And this was in 2000 and, oh, sorry, I've got slideshow. So slide. Not big enough. Okay, so this is his slide, and um, this is you know this is him in August, end of August of 2020. They came up to Snowbird. We this is a picture of the four of us on the top of the mountain. Uh, he didn't even need his supplemental breathing machine, which he brought like just in case at 11,000 feet he might have had trouble, but he didn't. So uh, this is Mark Manchester. Uh, this is Kathy Cummins. She was a speaker at the conference. She will tell. She has a great conference um, presentation, like one of the best I've heard. It's incredible. She was in a wheelchair, um, and this is her just before she gave away all of her wheelchairs that she had borrowed. <laughs> so fantastic. So uh, go ahead and um, and well, maybe I'll do this slide too, and then Kay, I'm going to let you take over. <laughs> know the facts, actually. You go ahead, Kay, you do this one, go ahead. Um, what if the neurologists are wrong about when you will die in three to five years? They gave Kim one year, but you know what? They don't know, they guess. And um, the facts are people can reverse ALS, but the, the neurologists deny that. There are thousands of cows that are slowing and stopping their ALS progression. Dr. Bedlack has confirmed 48 ALS reversals, dozens more he did not have adequate records for. He's helped none, zero, of his own patients reverse ALS. Tish and Scott have found over 100 without even trying. There likely are even thousands. Um, Kim was number 24 of Dr. Bedlack's reversal. Um, lots of in-progress reversals now that Bed Bedlack can't look at any more for the another, another two years. So in the next two years, there could be a lot of them. There are zero reversals with conventional medicine. Conventional medicine helps you with props to the grave. That's it. There's temporary reversals with neurons, and they're going to talk about that in uh, boot camp week four. The neurologists only know what they're trained. Um, what if a neurologist was wrong about the best way to treat ALS? Suppose you ask your neurologist, question one, if a child came into your office with lead poisoning, would you give the child a drug or would you focus on getting the lead out of the body? Uh, standard medical doctors really don't know how to do any kind of, of heavy metal detoxing. Question two, we have pals who come to your office full of lead, 15 times the safe level. Why would you suggest the drug over getting the lead out first, since lead is a known neurotoxin? We'll be talking about that more in boot camp week two. We're also gonna talk about testing next week because the te if you do a blood test, it will never show heavy metals unless you happen to have current exposure. So the tests that they do in your doctor's office, regular doctor's office are not uh, gonna show it up. Um, only a functional doctor will. 
So neurologists are really good people. They sincerely want to help. Most are not trained though in functional medicine, which is looking at all parts of the body instead of just the nerves. Neurologists are trained in nerves. They're trained in prescribing, even pushing drugs. They have no other tools. They believe they're doing the best for their patients. They're not trained in diet or nutrition, vitamins or herbs. Um, they will actually prescribe an anti-inflammatory drug while suggesting you eat inflammatory foods. That's not very logical. No, they're not trained in toxicology or immunology. For example, there's no inquiry on toxic exposure, bacterial, fungal, viral, parasite infection. It's a lot of things that can go wrong in ALS. Right. And they don't look for them. Yeah, and they are they just starting now to look at um you know viral infections they're just starting to look at gut function they're still not measuring heavy metals yeah they're still not looking at parasites where do heavy metals come from mostly from our teeth silver fillings gas off mercury um why don't neurologists and als clinics uh test for basic nutritional deficiencies which can be found most house Vitamin B12, vitamin D, magnesium, et cetera. Magnesium is hard to test for. You have to use a special test and they don't find magnesium deficiency in their standard blood test. Um, they should test for mercury, lead, pesticides, or they use the wrong kinds of tests and the, which don't show up heavy metals or other deficiencies. So this is in our mission statement on healingals.org. Just know we would like the ALS clinics and the neurologists to start doing this. We believe that we would have many, many more ALS reversals than we do now if this was standard of care. So our goal is to get this into standard of care, to train the neurologists on this. And, and I believe we can do it. They're good people. Once they figure this out, they will see it's it's important to build belief um it's it is possible to slow stop and reverse ALS. we didn't know that at the beginning we just thought we, we we go from day to day but one day kim just decided you know i i've got to i've got stuff i've got to do and that's what you do is you plan way ahead it's important to watch Stephen sherry's 21 minute video which is on the home page of humanals.org there's all kinds of information there. You read healing and healed, how summaries, scroll down the page and find videos and read stories. Read an ALS blog in the archives, uh, which is on the bottom right side of the homepage. And there are websites. Um, our website, ALSwinners.com is there, shackle.org. He was diagnosed in the... Uh, 94. 94. 94 and he's still walking around yeah uh, ericwinning.com he did a lot of research there's a lot of really good information on eric's site he did pass away just a few years ago at, at about 82 but not of ALS. Yeah, 85 of a stroke and a heart attack so it yeah. was totally unrelated to als and he was doing just fine <laughs> okay so one week one we're going to talk about functional medicine basics right now that's the next section and it's important that you educate yourself your improvement and reversal will educate your neurologist didn't do any good for ours we came healed he she still just said well i don't know why he's, he's getting better told him to do what he's doing, but he's not following the standard ALS protocol. But all that is, is the path to the brain. So why are not doctors not following common sense? Step one is give the body what it needs to heal. Food, clean, non-inflammatory, nonsense. Uh, you do have to watch out for your own personal sensitivities to food. But food will promote healing. Supplements, correct nutritional deficiencies with vitamins and minerals for optimal health. Not just in the low range, like vitamin D, so many. Everyone with neuro neurological disease basically has low vitamin D levels. 
Um, so your immune system is not working properly. You need to heal your gut so you can absorb necessary or important nutrients. Then in week two, we're gonna eliminate foreign chemicals. Why do we have foreign chemicals? Um, pesticides, mercury in our teeth, lead, arsenic, cadmium, aluminum, plastics. Uh, your digestion is really important. Pooping is important. Constipation and diarrhea can be huge problems for some of the ALS. Detox current chemicals from the gut and the liver and other body tissues that interfere with healing. You've got to heal the liver, which is it's, the liver is our main detoxification organ. And if it's plugged up, it won't work. Um, number three, your thoughts affect every cell in your body and can promote healing. Your intuition is critical, and this will be discussed more in week three. Once you research, you'll know more than your doctors in some respects. It's a partnership. You need to find a good doctor that will listen to you. What are your ideas? And it should be an exchange or a partnership. This will be discussed more in week four of the boot camp. Functional medicine is slow, but sure, not immediate. It took you likely many years to get sick, even though you didn't feel sick. And it's going to take some time to undo the damage that's been done. You have to be patient and allow these things to work. It's like filling the bathtub. If you're deficient, you will not feel the results of your supplements until the bath bathtub is full. For instance, Dr. Carolyn Dean says it takes six to eight months getting adequate magnesium to fully load the body with the magnesium you need. If you're toxic, you did not suddenly get sick. You had a trigger, for instance, stress. Um, it can be any kind of stress, grief, um, using up all the nutrients. And all of a sudden, um, all of a sudden you're sick, but you thought you've been healthy all along. You've had heavy metals all along. You may not feel like the heavy metals until they have no safe place to go and then the body begins to show symptoms or the virus and somebody can't hear me i'm going to speak up just a little more or the virus and bacteria overgrowth will not show up until they get bad was that any better they hear me a little better it takes patience it takes consistency you have to do one step at a time functional medicine is Slow but sure, but not immediate. It took years to get sick. Have to be consistent, otherwise the bathtub will not fill up. Do not attempt to do everything at once. You can read, you can study, you can, you can watch uh, some of these reversals. It's important to add just one or two of things at a time. For instance, this week, try to eliminate processed sugar. That's one good thing. Try to add one vitamin or mineral this week. Once you have these, you can add some more. So next we're gonna talk about how to assemble your team. Many pals can't do this all by themselves. A lot of pals work very, very hard on their own healing, but it helps to have a team. So let's talk about who you need to have on your team. You need to have only people who will help you get well, not help you die. I say the ALS clinics are just to help you get to the grave a little more comfortably. Family members, you want to choose family members who believe that you can heal. You, you, can, you can have one or two partners be, to be your research partner. You don't have to do it all alone, but you have to work together. For those who live with you who disagree, say very nicely, I am focusing on healing. Negativity blocks my healing, and that is such a huge point. Or please respect my choices. For those who don't live with you who disagree with taking a natural approach, just don't seem very often, minimize content. Friends only add people to your team who will help you get well, not help you die. Some will be very positive and will help you with research ideas. Most of your healing buddies 
you will find online or by phone and you will be back and forth with community ideas. Only if they are positive are they helping. Negative people. Um, Kim would sometimes have friends that he hadn't seen in years come into the shop and, and want to offer their sympathies. Um, and he would, he would just turn it around on them. Says, I'm not, says, I'm doing fine. How are you doing? Um, but to negative people, you need to be polite to them and say, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to heal. What are you going to do? <laughs> There'll be more information on, um, the holistic professional in week four of the boot camp. Some types are functional MDs, naturopaths, functional chiropractors, functional nutritionists, herbalists, acupuncture, massage therapists. Most nutrients do not have functional training. It's just a little- Most note. nutritionists, just don't go to a regular nutritionist. They're not going to help you. They have to have functional. They're, yeah, they're, they're trained by the food companies. Yeah, they're trained by the, the food companies that make the, that make all the processed food. So yeah, and even the chiropractors, like a functional chiropractor, you don't want to just go, you don't want to go to a sports chiropractor, right? You want to go to someone who's, you know, and again, I don't know how many, but some of those chiropractors are amazing. Uh, and they know much as much as the naturopaths or functional MDs. But we'll talk more about in boot camp how to find those. But just so you know, these are the major types. Okay, you use a specific doctor only as long as they're helping you. Um, you may work with more than one simultaneously. Every professional has a niche or different expertise, such as diet and nutrition or heavy metal detox for working on the gut or the liver. Work with those who believe you can heal. You can partnership with them, someone who listens, who will research your ideas and, and suggest new ideas. Yeah, and Carol, who will be speaking next week, I mean, she, I think she went to four different ones. She kind of got as much as she could out of one, and then she switched to another one, and another one, and another one. And she's doing great. She was diagnosed in 2005. So oh, this is important, with, though, we had to mention. People get very confused. They think that Dr. Bedlack has reversed 48 people. That's actually not true. Dr. Bedlack has confirmed 48 reversals he has not, that I know, zero reversals. So do you want to listen to your neurologist that has zero reversals of his own? And we love him. He is amazing. He is, he is confirming reversals. He has proved for you guys, you should be thanking him because he has proven it's possible. And he sends to his records, you tell me these people didn't have ALS, of course. He says he's 98% accuracy. These reversals are real. And he has done a huge service uh, by saying, yes, they're real. And yes, they reversed ALS. Anyway, we talked a little bit about this. Stem cells are temporary success. If you've had stem cells and you are experiencing some improvement, great come to class, figure out how to make sure that those stem cells don't die like the original ones. In general, our, the, what we have found, I mean, Carol told me the same thing. She was gonna get stem cells. She said, let me get, fix all my nutritional deficiencies, detox my body, get my teeth done, do everything I can. And then once my body's nice and clean, I'm going to, then I'm gonna, then I'll get stem cells but she's never had to get stem cells. She's hiking up mountains 15 years later. So we suggest you do the natural stuff first and then get the stem cells to support them if you want. Um, okay, here's a list of uh, uh, holistic doctors that you can find. Um, and this will be recorded. So in a couple of days, you can go back and, and um, see these slides so if you don't get these written down. Holistic doctors are important. There's some websites to find them. Holistic dentures, dentists are critical. If you have mercury in your mouth and don't get it out, you won't live. You have to get the mercury out of your mouth safely. And if you're not 100% comfortable, don't do it. Go research. Get a second opinion. Don't do things that you're not comfortable with. This is really important with any doctor. Okay. 
what what we've been telling our pals for years is you are the captain of your ship choose your crew or you're the president choose your cabinet but you with als are the only one that can tell your body i am going to heal your cells listen to you they don't listen to your doctor they but the doctor can put so much negativity in your brain that it can be harmful um, your holistic doctors are your advisors, your family, friends, and support teams are your advisors. Your neurologist just is your advisor. As president, you choose whether or not to follow this advice. It is so important to listen to your in intuition. Your gut will tell you, pray or meditate, and even sleep on it. You must take responsibility for your own healing. Read books. I read books, I'd hand it to Kim and he'd read the book. He hasn't read everything I've read, but he's read a lot of them. You need to research diet and watch holistic videos. Look up every ingredient in every food you consume. And this goes on for years. I sometimes buy something, I bring it home and think, why did I buy that? <laughs> research every supplement you take, every medication you take. You need to feel comfortable with everything you do because you're the one that's feeding what's going on. So it's important that you be the boss. Okay, then we're gonna to go to food and diet. Is food important? Doctors don't think it is, but everything you put in your body will either help heal the body or inhibit healing or make you worse. If you have a feeding tube, um, most of what they recommend for feeding tube is totally sugar. And all it does is create massive inflammation and fungus. Um, there are recommended formulas for feeding tubes. Um, organic, should be all organic with nothing artificial. Kate's Farm is one that is covered by Medicare. Liquid Hope is another. Keo in a meal at healamil.com. Uh, you can use the healing ALS code for a 10% discount from Heal and a Meal. Okay. And I didn't mean to say inhibit feeding. I meant to say inhibit healing. Apologize. <laughs> Cause inflammation well, and inhibit healing. <laughs> okay. All right. Everything you put in your body will either help. Again, organic fruits, uh, vegetables and fruits. Dr. Oz years ago published the avoid the dirty dozen. Those are the dozen vegetables that fruits and vegetables that are so heavily covered with pesticides. Strawberries and apples are the worst. They definitely need to be organic. Then there's a clean 15. They might have a little stuff on it, but they're way cleaner than some others. Um, you can look up dirty dozen vegetables and probably find that list. Organic apples, organic berries, avocados are important. Eat fruit separately and look up food combining. Green leafy vegetables are important and root vegetables actually just real food. Organic vegetables and fruits continued. Sulfur vegetables uh, will help correct misfolded proteins. That's one thing the medical field knows, that people with ALS have misfolded protein. So what gives you sulfur vegetables? Cabbage, cauliflower, broccoli, onions, garlic, Brussels sprouts if you like them. Um, all ideally organic if you can find them. Dr. Walls. Um, was diagnosed with MS in 2000. And she finally decided she, after doing everything that medical field told her to do and she was getting worse, she says, I gotta fix my brain. So she eats three cups of sulfur vegetables, three cups of dark greens, and three cups of brightly colored fruits and vegetables per day. She had some other things she added. Um, but in four to six months, she was back to walking instead of being in a wheelchair. She also uh, got her fillings out. So she was in a wheelchair for nine years. She's a medical doctor and wouldn't listen to anybody. And finally, a friend of hers, I spoke to her one day, she told me a friend of hers basically kept bugging her. But finally, like after like eight years, she said, OK, when are you going to just start listening to me? <laughs> And so here's MDs are very stubborn, okay? Um, they can be. So just, yeah. you know, she finally took her health into her own hands and healed. And she's riding a bike. She's jogging. She's doing everything after being in a wheelchair for nine years. So, you know, and getting her fillings out was key. 
that was part of it as well. So just, uh, she doesn't always mention that, but uh, that was part of her healing process. And we are going to talk about that next week. And you saw it last week. So, but it'll be part of week two. Why are, why are fermented foods important? Because if you've ever had antibiotics, all the good bacteria, as well as the bad bacteria, gets wiped out of your body. So it needs to be replaced. Raw sauerkraut, kimchi, kabochi tea, pickles. Um, they're all good for helping rebuild that good bacteria. Other good foods, sweet potato squash, or organic zucchini, but probably not coated in flour and deep fried. <laughs> right? And Kay, I think we forgot nuts and seeds, but they need to be in here too. Yeah. We eat a lot of nuts. I, I don't know where they are. No peanuts. No yeah. peanuts. Oh, wait a minute. We didn't, we didn't forget. They're here. Yeah, but we haven't got that far. Okay, it's important to eat clean meat. Uh, Grass-fed beef is, ha, has omega-3s. Grass-fed beef has not been thin. Corn, if they feed it corn, the fats they make is omega-6. In our country, in the U.S., the proportion is way out of line because so many of the fats that um, are in the processed foods and everything is omega-6 instead of omega-3. You can eat organic free range chicken, wild caught fish, but the small ones, no farmed fish, please. They feed them wrong. So they, they're again, omega-6 instead of omega-3 fats. Um, no smart. A lot of the, a lot of the fish in, not only in the ocean, but in our, all our rivers are contaminated because we have contaminated our rivers. You know, the manufacturers dump their garbage in the river and so it's a problem. Don't eat tuna. All freshwater fish have toxins. Um, it, Dr. Wall suggests that you eat a little bit of liver once a week, and that could help heal the liver. Nuts and seeds and good oils and beans are all good. Coconut oil is especially good. Um, it, you can clear up fungus, all kinds of things. When you put it on your skin, um, you can, and it should go in your food. Um, olive oil should only be used raw. Brazil nuts contain selenium. Um, we eat one or two Brazil nuts every morning with our breakfast. But do not eat peanuts. They contain a toxin called aflatoxin and they create a lot of mold. It's important to store nuts in the freezer so they do not uh, go rancid. Next slide. It's important to avoid inflammatory foods, pesticides, GMOs and your, whatever your food sensitive are. Pesticides um, can do more damage than they have any have good food value. Grains are highly inflammatory and acidic. No GMOs, no gluten, no wheat, no corn, spelt, rice, so the gluten, gluten grains are wheat, corn, uh, wheat, spelt, barley, and rye, but corn is still highly inflammatory because it's been hybridized. Most rice also contains arson. Uh, dairy, including milk and cheese, is highly inflammatory, probably mu mucus forming. You should not eat any pro processed foods, no junk food, no pork. Pork is really hard to digest and no fried food because likely it's fried in bad oils. No artificial flavors, that's a chemical. Colors, sweeteners such as MSG and aspartame. Um, Dr. Terry Walls says on one of her videos that there are 10 and there are 80,000 chemicals approved by the FDA to go in our foods. I don't think that's what God meant us to eat personally. We should not drink alcohol, it deletes magnesium. Tobacco creates problems. Soft drinks are, are so acidic that our blood has to just fight to keep you alive. So, with no sugar, raw honey, maple syrup is a good option. Okay, another issue is that, and Eric Edney talked about this a lot. Disease loves to live in an acidic body. What foods are acidic? Everything but fruits and vegetables. Um, those two are alkaline, everything else is acidic. Um, and to different degrees of acidity. Meats are the most acidic, but brains are still. Um, in the acidic side. So we eat lots of grains, lots of wheat. Um, we're gonna be pretty acidic. 
our blood needs to be alkaline in order to keep us alive. And ideally the pH should be around 7.4, 7.2, 7.4, right in that range. I think seven is the balance point between acidic and alkaline. So being a little bit more alkaline helps your body to um, get rid of the disease. And there's lots of different kinds of diets. We've tried several. The medical medium diet is high in fruits and vegetables. The ketogenic diet is high in fat, no grains and limited carbs. The paleo diet is mostly meat. The Walls protocol is paleo with lots of vegetables. She has too much meat in hers for Kim and I's taste. Vegan is no meat, no fish, no dairy, no animal products. And vegetarian allows dairy and fish. So we eat kind of just a little bit of, we do kind of a balance of it in the oven. We have good fats. Um, good fats are important. We eat lots of fruits and vegetables um, and small amounts of meat. Next slide. Um, somebody asked about a vegetarian diet. There are some challenges with ALS with a strict vegetarian diet. You'll have to research that to find out why. The water we drink and the air we breathe is important. The water we need is a minimum of a half, of, a half an ounce per pound of weight. So a hundred, person 132 pounds should drink 64 ounces of water for proper hydration. Now, some we know cows are in such difficult circumstances, they can't hardly drink or eat anything. So at some point, sometimes you might have to have an IV just to hydrate yourself. Tap water likely in every city, probably around the world has toxins in it, chlorine, chloride, and all kinds of things that they try to do to make it pure. Bottled water likely has my plastic micro nanoparticles in it. Not to mention that um, we're killing our world with plastic bottles everywhere. Now there's a Fuji, Fuji, Fiji water, comes from the island of Fiji and has silica in it. And a large amount over a short period of time can help eliminate aluminum in the body. Um, you need to research water filters, Scott and Tish prefer the big Berkey. It's quite inexpensive, gravity fed. Uh, water filter and it gets about 99.9% .9 of the toxins and maintains the minerals, which is important. Um, distilled water is completely pure, but it has no minerals in it. So that filter runs about 350. Reverse osmosis removes all the minerals as well as all the toxins. So in order to drink reverse osmosis water, you need to take extra minerals. Structured waters, many cows have found this helpful. Alkaline water, I don't know, I haven't studied enough to know. Um, so by the way, on reverse osmosis, it is reverse osmosis water and distilled water are basically the same thing. You do not want to drink distilled water unless you are taking a decent amount of minerals. It will actually pull minerals out of your body. So you've got to be careful with it. Okay, and, and my husband, because I was using a distiller before he was diagnosed, he wasn't getting enough magnesium. He had to have heart surgery. So, you know, magnesium, good water, it's all important. Air filters, consider um, the air we breathe, whether we're outside or inside, uh, we need to be able to breathe clean air. Okay, it's important to remember small steps make a difference. And it's important to be consistent. Once Kim and I started on our on his, um, uh, and I, I, I have a different protocol than he does. I've had cancer, so, so we both take supplements. So they're kind of tailored to what, what he needs and what I need. But it's important to remain consistent. You try something for a month, it doesn't work. Oh, I'll drop that and try something else. That's, a, that's kind of a bad way to go. You yes, study even, the, uh, Stephen Shackle said four to six months. Do not expect anything in the first four to six months. So you've got to give it that amount of time. Go ahead, Kay. That, that or sometimes even a little bit more, but study the supplement you're taking and what it does and determine whether it's one you need. Everyone with ALS comes to the ALS table from a different source of toxins. 
So it's not like, okay, we can go in and do this one program and it will work for me and it will work for everyone. That's not the case. Some have lead, some have aluminum, some have mercury, some have fungus, some have Lyme disease. So each person has to kind of determine uh, what to do. Yeah, um, and you know, St- um, uh, Stephen, you want to read the science. I just want to um, just repeat what Kay said. You need to read the science because Stephen Bishop took Protandum and it wasn't until month 13. He had been taking it for over a year and he said, well, this is good for my body, even if it's not helping my ALS. And he, he didn't feel a thing, not one thing until week 13. And he didn't change anything else. So it took for him to his bathtub to fill up. It took a whole year of filling his bathtub up. And then finally he starts getting results in month 13 and it wasn't as one good day. And then two weeks later he had two good days and slowly, but surely. um, And now he's golfing and skiing again. This is gigantic, but it took a long time. It is important to detox. And if you have mild detox symptoms, that's okay. But if there's severe detox symptoms, it is not okay. If you feel something is harmful, you must stop that. Magnesium and vitamin K2. Um, the favorites are Dr. Carolyn Dean's Remag and Remite. Remag puts magnesium back in. Remite is your minerals. And mag- Jigsaw and uh, Mag SRT is a slow release magnesium. Magnesium citrate is not particularly a good source of magnesium. But if you're having digestive issues, you could use it for a while. Vitamin D3 is natural. Vitamin K, vitamin D2 is synthetic and very dangerous. So vitamin D3 has to have K2 and it has to have magnesium to be absorbed. 1,000 to 5,000 milligrams a day. Your D levels should be around 60 to 90. Usually they say, okay, if you're 30, you're okay, but that's the bottom of where you should be. Uh, you can get your D levels checked, do uh, some supplementing for a period of time, and then go back and have them checked again and see if you're making progress on getting toward that 60 to 90 range. Vitamin B12, most pals are deficient in vitamin B12 because it's made in the digestive system and the digestive system is messed up. Messed up. If your vitamin B12 is normal, yet not at least 70 to 800, 700 to 800, then you do not have sufficient levels to grow new neurons. That's important. If you can take a vitamin B complex, um, iodine, most pals are deficient, especially for thyroid support. So iodine helps your thyroid. Omega-3s are important. Coconut oil has an ointment on weak muscles or six to eight tablespoons with food. We don't take that much, but you know we, we have some... Uh, coconut oil every day. I will just mention that Kim puts it on his feet and it keeps athletes foot away. So that's nice. Um, ALA, which is alpha-lipoic acid, or the detox poison. Um, and then a mineral supplement can be Remite from Dr. Dean, Aussie Minerals or Trace Minerals. There's some options. Um, antioxidants are important because most pals have high oxidative stress, free radicals. So probably one of the most important is, Tish says it's different than I, I say it's tax season. I don't know how to say it, um, but it's far more powerful than vitamin C and vitamin E and beta carotene. It gives you far more antioxidant activity than the others. Selenium is important. Turmeric, we start with 750 milligrams a day. But if it's combined with black pepper, then it becomes more available in the body. So we'll do 500 milligrams when it has the black pepper. Theracumin is also a good product. Ubiquinol is the best form of CoQ10, another antioxidant. Vitamin C, Vitality C is, is a good brand. Vitamin E, you can probably get a lot of that from your foods. Um, glutathione is important. Um, you, you can eat an avocado every day. You get good sleep in a dark room. You can use grapefruit essential oils to build your glutathione. For one year, we did 
this bottle of liquid glutathione that we got at wellnesspharmacy.com. Um, it's, it's, I think it's now it's $60 a bottle. It takes one teaspoon a day. It takes a month to use it. Um, it really did help Kim initially. And then we heard about the grapefruit and kind of switched to that. There's also a new uh, glutathione, glutathione suppository, uh, which is an option. And then there's IV glutathione, which you have to go to a doctor. So some of these other options can help when getting out or expense is, is a big issue. Yeah, so um, the glutathione suppository is supposedly a more effective and a lot less expensive than getting an IV. So mm -hmm. um, that's something to check into. Mm -hmm. And you can make them yourself in Coulter Oil. Uh, you talk to Brian about that maybe after on the Q&A part. Because okay. I think he tried it. Um, Lily is milk thistle, tadka, selenium, ALA, uh, vitamin C, amino acids you can get from leek, low dose naltrexidone. Yeah, I didn't say that right. It, that's prescription. But you have to be very careful uh, if, if you take a prescription that you don't dam that it does not damage the liver. That every neural, not every, about half the neurologist will um, prescribe Ritotec or Ritosol, and it damages the liver. And gluten also damages the liver by blocking, and gluten is a glue, by covering up the fibrins in the liver so it can't detox. L-serine is an amino acid, it helps the immune system, um, ALS studies, one gram a day is plenty. Leak to be fit is another one we're going to talk about next week or when, Trish? Uh, November 15th, we're going to, uh, we're actually doing a whole um, presentation on November 15th, which is right the weekend, the Sunday after boot camp. We're actually going to do an entire presentation about what's in Leap. Okay. Uh, the important thing is, is it's probably good to do some of these other things. Um, and start to clean up your body before you, perhaps before you start the leap. It's got all kinds of good things in it, as you can see. But it may be, it may be more of a jump to heal if you're already working on getting better. Right. So you want to just not just do the leap all by itself. You can start the leap right away, but just, you know, understand this is a process and you need to work on everything. You can't just, you know, expect one thing to work. Um, I just sort of wrote a few notes here. You don't have to read all this. Why we got interested in LEAP was because of Mark Manchester. He spent three years on a ventilating feeder to wheelchair, you know, whatever. And now he's walking around and talking and eating on his own again and breathing on his own. So, um, you know, we, you know, spoke to the person who invented LEAP and we've just been kind of looking into more and more of it. But basically the amino acids um, provide the body with the fundamental building blocks. That's what it's doing. The body has to assemble the build, build, building blocks and use cofactors. So some of the things that in the leak, you know, they help methylation, they help gene expression. Um, they're very careful, like something like they always make sure they use the bioactive form. So it's, you know, a lot of them, you know, you have the item in the product, but they're not, it's not being done. Um, they're not taking the best kind. So, you know, instead of spending four to $5 a kilo, they'll spend 28. Well, you got about 50 or 60 things in there, but it all adds up. So the main thing, what I discovered is a lot of these recommended supplements, you don't necessarily need that entire list if you're taking leap, but the big thing that leap has is amino acids. And what we're getting is reversals from leap to be fit. And I don't know what the deal is, but the, but for some reason, the people that are taking leap to be fit and l -serine, we've gotten more reversals than anything else. I'll tell you one thing it has beaten it though. And that is prayer. We have 12 reversals with prayer, but I think the leap to be that that's only that we know about. There's probably a ton more. Um, and leap to be fit is, is catching up fast. We're getting incredible results of from 
uh, South America and Europe. And we've only known about this for a year, but people have started taking it. And I think it's because they have fewer pesticides, fewer toxins, fewer GMOs in these other countries. They seem to have a cleaner uh, body than we do. Um, and so they're in general getting better results. The main thing is this is not a cure-all. You still need to heal the gut. You still need to detox. You still need to do other things. Uh, biofilms, we're going to talk about a little bit this week, and we're going to talk about more next week. So if your nutrients aren't getting absorbed by the biofilm, obviously you're not going to feel anything from taking LEAP. Um, and again, sometimes it takes time for these things to work. So just... Well, we're going to talk about LEAP again on November 15th, and but and we're going to talk about biofilm later this time and next week. So um, go ahead, Kay. Okay, we're going to talk about essential oils, but I first say you have to add apples, organic apples to your diet. If yes. you can't chew an apple, then uh, make applesauce. Right. But apples help you deal the myelin sheath, which is the coating around your nerves, that has been damaged from one thing or another. Yeah, you've got to, you've got to heal that myelin sheath if you want to make progress. Yeah. Um, I was going to say the apple, half an apple is really good for the liver, radishes, carrots, like two little radishes, a carrot and a half an apple. I was listening to the liver detox series. If you ever get the liver detox series, please, um, you know, watch it because you, you will learn a ton. So, um, there was something else. Oh yeah, I take leap, and 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 honestly, if I had ALS, I would take leap. I happen to have um, another neurological issue, and that's why I take leap. But I I think it's great stuff. That's all I can tell you. Um, and so one if more I had ALS, note. Yes, I would take it. One more note on those apples. They contain those glial cells, and those cells are the building blocks in the myelin sheath. So it's okay. not like oh, I've taken apples a little bit and then stop. Take them consistently, like every day if you can. Apples, apples contain malic acid, which make galea cells. Right. And then those galea cells make the myelin sheet. So it's just one extra step. Um, so somebody just asked, can I only take one scoop of leaf a day? And I don't know personally, but I, what I've heard is that you need two scoops a day um, in order to be successful with it. Right. But you um, can start if you if you want to start with one scoop, make sure you don't have any, you know, adverse right. reactions. Mm -hmm. um, and by the way, week four, if it's a question of um, food and or finances, week four, we're going to talk about how you can work with the finances, raise money, that kind of thing. Get your friends and uh, relatives to help out because this is not an, an inexpensive disease. So we're going to talk about some ideas on how you can finance some of this, uh, some of these supplements um, if you're having, uh, if you have uh, limited finances. That's week four. Okay. They, they formed, filmed a video uh, several years ago, about six years ago when we were down in Texas and they came to see us and there's a video on talking about the essential oils and how to use them. And they've got the YouTube address there. Um, then in August, we talked, had a whole recording on essential oils. There are four favorite oils that we use for the feet, which, which goes up and connects with the spine. We know that the spine is affected in ALS. And those four oils are frankincense, cypress, sandalwood, and balance. And um, if you want to, if you want to go to my website and email me, I will send you a, a reflexology chart so I can show you where to put those four oils. Um, breathe is great for breathing. Kim's breathing was terrible. And that other video that we did in, or the recording that we did in, in, in August, I showed different diffusers and how to use it. Melaleuca oil is good for fungus. Um, you can put it in a diffuser. Some people have mold. Even I think it will even take care of mold in the home. But never breathe cinnamon directly over the top of the diffuser because cinnamon is a very hot oil. Next slide. Great. And K Cherry can be reached at ALSWinners.com and just go to the contact form. Mm -hmm. Okay. The gut function is really important because we know that pals lose weight. Um, and so you're, you're eating food, but it's not getting digested. Um, 
that our gut is part of our uh, immune system. It's like a second brain. There is a mind brain connection. If your mind is not good, and I'll talk about that one three, um, then even your gut doesn't work. Probiotics are, are pretty important, particularly if you've been on, on antibiotics. They should be high quality. Um, Jigsaw Health has a new probiotic out that may be very good. Uh, Kim and I have both used it more recently. When he was in the hospital two years ago, I ate dinner at the hospital every night and they'd had, you know, all their meats were full of antibiotics. So I had problems for months and finally I ordered the Jigsaw and it cleared me right up. Soul is another probiotic. Uh, Mark Manchester, who's he is, that's good. Um, lactobacillus strains are essential. They crowd out the black, bad bacteria. You don't need to take it forever. Uh, you can take it for a period of time. Uh, and some doctors suggest rotating different probiotics. Some probiotic food, as we discussed earlier, was sauerkraut, kimchi, kombucha, and pickles. Prebiotics are foods that help promote healthy bacteria, and they can be found in dandelion greens, artichokes, chicory root, garlic, onions. There's those important garlic and onions again. Leeks, asparagus, that's important. Bananas and other good fruits and vegetables. You could also take digestive enzymes. You'd have to research what is particularly good. Uh, curcumin, uh, um, that's kind of part of what's in turmeric. Uh, bad bacteria you don't like it, so they run away. That's nice. We have bad stuff running away. That's really a good thing. The plaque in the teeth, plaque in the artery, and plaque in the biofilm, uh, are this, and the biofilm and the gut are the same. So uh, one of the big questions is, what is a biofilm? And Kay was explaining this to me yesterday when we were preparing this. SIBO, small intestine bacterial overgrowth, is just an extension of the biofilm in the gut that has invaded the small intestine. A biofilm uh, is like a plastic coating around the bacteria and viruses, they put that coating around to protect themselves so they can keep eating your heavy metals that you're feeding them all the time. Um, in the gut, if you've got, got such a buildup of, of biofilm, then there's not room for food. We've known some pals that they just, they eat almost nothing and, and they, they're not absorbing any nutrients and that's a big problem. Detoxing the heavy metals will take away their ability to build that biofilm. Viruses and bacteria also create waste products, which we need to detox. And sugar and gluten feed biofilm. So that's one big reason why we need to get rid of sugar and gluten. Certain things break down the biofilm, like Swiss tea and digestive enzymes. And they'll cover more of this, in, I think, just next week. You can't um, just break up biofilm without killing them off. But as you, and so I've, I've even read that there is a essential oil that will do it, but I hadn't, I didn't find it in time. And I have seen a video of how the oil goes in and, and just breaks the hole in that biofilm and then all the bacteria just falls out. That's good because then you can get rid of it. <laughs> it's good and bad. So you have to do it slowly though. Right. This is what's really important. You can't just break up the biofilm and be able to handle all those toxins. Right. You need to kill them off slowly. You need to break up the biofilm slowly mm -hmm. and make sure your detox pathways are good to go and clear before you even attempt that okay so this is a this is really a big deal so we've covered the basics um you know we've covered building belief is really important um um and then next week we're going to do detox so um, just so you know that this is, you know, that's, that's so we, we, we build the belief. We had a functional medical, um, functional medical uh, introduction. Um, we covered diet, assembling your team. We covered diet. Um, we covered supplements and we covered gut function. And that's a lot. And it's now been an hour and 15 minutes. So uh, again, we'll probably cover, we'll go deeper into some of these. Um, and we're going to go very deep in January. Actually, it says January. It is February. So I apologize. That is absolutely wrong. It is February, not January. So, um, but because well, we want to give you guys time to absorb all this stuff 
a catch up, um, you know, watch the recordings, you know, kind of that. And then we'll do the advanced. Boot. We want to let you integrate uh, the four weeks of boot camp and then work with um, the advanced boot camp in February. So um, we will do question and answer now. I'd like to introduce the two people that will be doing Q&A today, uh, Gabby Fay and uh, Marcel. So we'll do that. And um, anything else you want to add, uh, Kay, before we, before we um, open up the... Uh... No, I, I think that's good. Um, if they want me to answer, my vision is really bad until next week when I get my new glasses. So I'll have to listen to the questions from Gabby Faye and Marcel. Okay, perfect. And Gabby Faye, uh, Marcel, you are now unmuted. So go ahead and ask the first question. So we have a question from Wendy. Uh, what is the type of dentist that is certified to remove mercury? Um, you have to go to a biological dentist. Um, and on that chart, when you got down to there, there was two places, two websites where you could look up a dentist. Um, the, the important thing is to have a rubber dam in your mouth while they're doing it and to have a ventilator. So instead of as they're removing it, if the fumes don't go into, you don't breathe them. It's also important for the dentist and their assistant to have, to be covered like a spacesuit man <laughs> to protect themselves. Um, some dentists don't realize how dangerous that mercury is. Um, there's lots of stories about that. So Right, it's so IAOMP.org and also uh, the last week's uh, recordings are up from Dr. David Kennedy and they're listed there as well. And they're also listed in the Where Do I Start document on healingals.org. That was excellent last week. Mm -hmm. uh, Gabby Faye, next question. Okay, uh, a lot of people were asking about the financial aspect of holistic and integrative medicine. Um, and so just to combine a lot of questions, people were wondering if there are any specific funds aside from like GoFundMe, which isn't available in a lot of countries besides America. We will cover that in week four, for sure. Um, but it, again, I mean, my, my short answer is, you know, like if you want to get, um, you want to get a docu-series that you think is going to really help you um, and it costs $200. Well, you know what? See if you can get a family member. You know, I mean, I think I think getting family members together, they didn't have GoFundMe in uh, India and we had, um, Kate, you, there was a girl in India, her mom had ALS, she came over and they all raised the money uh, herself. They, they just got friends, families, they just did like a you know, an email fundraiser and got friends and family members to pay for her trip to the conference in 2019. So she could learn everything and go home and help her mom. So there are lots of ways you can do it. And we really want to encourage you, your friends, colleagues, family members. We did a colleague uh, who, um, who had a financial issue, it uh, wasn't a health issue, it was something else, but it was a legal issue. We raised money literally at work. We just like everybody, I don't know how many thousand dollars we raised, but we, you know, you there are resources besides GoFundMe. And we'll talk about them more in week four. Thank you. So we have a question from Jen. So she asked, what if you are vegan? Do you have to eat meat as an ALS patient? I can say what you can answer this as well. So let me get you my opinion. Um, it depends on you, whether you're able to or not. Um, I know that the Dalai Lama was vegan. He did not believe in that these Buddhist and his doctors said, you need to eat liver once a week. You need to start eating meat. And he, st and he was going to die if he didn't start eating meat. So he did start eating meat. I cannot answer that because I'm not you. All I know is the Dalai Lama made this decision because his whatever he did enough reading and listened to his doctors and he got a lot better with the meat. So this is a very personal decision that you need to do your own research on. But I do know that some people, and the Dalai Lama was one of them, didn't get better until they added meat to their diet. Uh, Kay, do you want to answer it, that? It, it could be important. Uh, Dr. Joseph McCullough, when he was going to college, thought everyone should be vegetarian. And then he found out 
that uh, he did a testing on whether your veg what types of food do well in your body. And he found out he had to eat meat. He says, I don't have to eat a lot, maybe an ounce of meal or, you know, some. But I, I can't tell you to not go vegetarian, but you might have to just experiment and see how your body reacts. Um, I think, Patricia, is there a list or sorry, a link for finding holistic and functional doctors? Some people were asking where to find them. Yes. You go to healingals.org. It says start here. You go to the where do I start document. And then it's how to find a medical professional document right there. All right. I'll just add that to the chat. Thank you. Okay. Um, Anita's asking, uh, what about coffee? Coffee is very acidic. Um, a lot of people drink a lot of coffee. Um, we have never been coffee drinkers, but it coffee is very acidic. So that's just where you have to be careful. Yeah, it can also, if you drink too much coffee, it can blow out your adrenals. Um, it was interesting because my holistic doctor told me I, I wasn't a coffee drinker. said, you need to take a little bit of coffee or and she gave me something else because I didn't drink coffee at the time. Um, so coffee, the jury's a little bit out on coffee. A little bit seems to be good. A lot is definitely bad, um, but it is very acidic. So you darn well better be balancing it with a lot of fruit and vegetables if you're going to drink coffee. And I don't have it every day. I just, you know, I think we're down to three times a week and we don't eat much. We don't drink much. Um, but again, that's, uh, that's a very personal decision. You all have to make a very personal decision. Um, I talked to one pal, she said she drinks four ounces a day and she really feels she went off of it completely for a while and she just feels really good on four ounces a day. So again, everybody's different. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Um, Judith asked if the host can give permission to record because her English is not good. I'm just going to go ahead and answer that. Um, Patricia does all the recordings, Patricia and Scott on their own, and they will be posted afterwards to the website. So no one else can have permission to do the recordings. Um, okay. And next question. Um, I'm still Take scrolling. No, okay. Gonna... So uh, there are some questions about water. So, um, the question, what about zero water, Dr. Willard's water, and what is structured water? So that's... I'll, I've, I've heard of Willard's water before, that it's supposed to be good. We live on a, on a farm out in the country, and we have our well is 135 feet deep, so we don't worry too much about... It's got a lot of filtering that's gone on before it comes back up to us. Um, mm -hmm. Fish on the structured water? Yeah, I thought it was garbage at first. And then um, I heard about it and I kind of dismissed it. And then one of our pals said, you know, I can really feel a difference with structured water. And then I listened to a functional doctor on video that I really respected. He said, you got to drink structured water and this is what it does. And then I heard a second pal say they felt it made a difference. So we are now structuring all of our water. I got the, we got this little structure for $300, but it lasts for the rest of your life. So I, we just did it about, what, about four years ago, Scott, we started structuring our water. It's probably more like five years ago. But so yeah. we do a Berkey filter and before the it goes into the Berkey filter from the tap. I structure it and then put it in the filter. And that's what we do. And it cost me 350 bucks for the Berkey filter, 300 bucks for the, for the structure, but it's good for life. And we only have to replace the uh, filters on the water filters. So that's what we do. And we have a <laughs> lot of toxins from mines up here in Park City. Oh, yeah, so yeah, just yeah. to let you know, we have, we have a lot of toxins in our tap water that they, they don't get out. Plus we want, don't want the chlorine. So it's not, it's not a brand structured water. It's structured super. water. No, I can give you, actually, I can post it. I will post it. I have to look it up. You there is a brand. I can give you, I will do it on the website. Maybe I'll just go now and do it while you guys are answering more questions. To explain what structured water is. Uh, the video explains it way better than me. I'll put the website up there. Yeah. Gabby Fea, you. If you could explain. Well, I don't know what it is. <laughs> oh, okay. um, but I'll ask them. I'm going to go look for it. That's yes. why I was on. 
so what, what uh, we'll do, we'll give an example of which type of structure filter, the ones that we bought. And it's basically the flowing of water. Like if you have natural water down a river, it's going through rocks, it's going through everything, and the structure of the water changes. Um, so this is so, basically like running down a river in water that's changing the structure of the water before you ingest it. Okay, so this one is called naturalactiontechnologies.com. And Scott, if you could put that in the, it's naturalactionstechnologies.com, put that in the chat. And um, it's just this little thing. And literally we put it from the, I put it in the tap and I have this little, I, this is a glass, but I put my pitcher under it. And then from then I fill up my book, water filter. And I honestly don't know that it's helping, but like I said, I've had enough people that said it's really helping um, that we, it was enough to convince me to use it. And so we use it. <laughs> Okay. And supposedly it helps absorb the, this is the, the when I read the science on it it supposedly helps people absorb the water better because you can be drink a ton of water and still be dehydrated and so it kind of goes through and there's a video on naturalactiontechnologies.com there's this like video but it it moves the water around and um, makes it more like you would drink it out of a river, <laughs> um, like in the olden days. Okay. Okay, some more specific food and water questions are quinoa. What do you okay, you want to take it? We, we use some quinoa. I don't cook it as the breakfast necessarily, but I use a cup of quinoa flakes when I make our granola. And our granola is on our website, uh, ALSWinners.com, um, under the food page. I've got the recipe on there. It's got nuts and seeds. But my granola is not mostly grain. It's mostly nuts and seeds. A little honey, a little coconut oil, cinnamon, cloves, all, you know, some good spices. And quinoa is a seed and not a grain. I guess that's why it's okay and it doesn't have any gluten in it. So it's definitely, it's okay. But again, you know, just sort of be careful. Don't like, don't eat like cups of it a day. Yeah. <laughs> but, but quinoa. <laughs> I put one cup in a recipe and the two of us eat that for two weeks. So we're not getting very much quinoa. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So... Laura asks, uh, do you start supplements before detoxing? So what do you do first, actually? Detoxing or supplements? Uh, some supplements will detox you. I don't know that we start one. I don't think we even knew about detox pathways or how to detox or any of that when we started. Um, somebody asked about ozone. I think I saw it come up, but how often does Kim do ozone? Right now, he's doing a rectal ozone three times a week. Um, when he started, he was giving himself ozone IVs all by himself. Three times a week, he was doing the rectal ozone twice a day. He was doing an ear one for a few minutes a day, and he was doing a breathe, breathing it through olive oil will take the sting, the harshness out of the ozone. He was doing that for 20 minutes a day. Um, but then once and people, I'm hoping that Lisa's going to answer that a little differently. So okay, that's fine. Go ahead. I guess, but again, this is a different opinion. So go ahead, Lisa. Lisa Manchester. Yeah, ask the question again, Patricia. Um, the question. Could you repeat the question for us? I I just saw it come up. I don't think they've read that one yet. He just asked how much ozone Kim did. Oh no, not that one. The one before. I'm talking about. Do you do do you take supplements? Do you diet detox? Okay. First, so I, I think that's I'd like I'd like Lisa to give her opinion on that one too. As far as taking the supplements, you first. want to take supplements before you detox or after you detox? What order do you do? Uh, the way that I would do it is take the supplements before I would zone into detoxing because you want to get your body to a state that the gut is healthy or healthier than what it was because if then if you go start detoxing first, you're going to put your body into a different state. So you want to build your body up before you detox. 
Yeah, and I think, um, and, and as Kay said, some foods detox, you don't worry about some of the foods and supplements that naturally detox you. That's okay. So what, the, what Kay said is also correct because, you know, just eating a lot of fruits and vegetables is going to help detox your body naturally. And certain of those basic antioxidants is going to help detox your body naturally. Those are okay. It's just that don't do this major detox protocols until you've built up your body. So I think that's really good. Eric Edney said the same thing. In Eric Edney's book, he said when he wrote his book, he said detox, then do the supplements. Um, and, and he changed his mind. Um, and he said, you know, you really need to build up the body a little bit, make sure it's strong enough to handle the detox, but you can start detox fairly early, just, you know, kind of build up the body, see the, how it works on a mild detox. And we'll, we're going to talk about that next week as well. So thank um, you both for your answers. Kim never had a Herkimer's reaction. He used ozone. Ozone was his and it didn't move the toxins through the body. We feel like it just deleted the toxins. Yeah, and we're going to talk about ozone yeah. next week and the other ways to detox that do not that are that are not harmful. I think ozone is not a, is a very safe way to detox that you don't have to do anything special with. I think the far infrared sauna is another one. So we will that will be on next week's topic. Okay. Are you up, Marcel? Where's the name? Yeah, so the question of Corin uh, is green tea good or bad? We don't drink green tea, so Lisa or Tish. Green tea is high in antioxidants, but it also has caffeine. So green tea can be good. You have to make sure of the source because some of it comes from China. Just because it's organic does not necessarily mean that it doesn't have toxins in it. It can have lead you know, in it, for example. Um, but yes, in general, green tea is good, but just again, notice that it has caffeine um, and like not too much and anything, not too much. People start eating gallons and gallons and gallons of green tea and then they're having reactions from too much caffeine. So, you know. <laughs> uh, Lisa, can you talk a little bit about the Cinemate um, while they have you on? Can Lisa unmute Tish? Yep. Uh, Cinemate, just can you explain what that is? Somebody's asking. Cinemate is to help with digestion, energy, focus. Um, it is a tea. It can be hot or cold. Um, Herba Mate is the main component in it and uh, cinnamon. Um, so it also helps with the blood sugar levels. So you're not doing these major spikes of something that you would consume like uh, green tea or caffeine uh, in a coffee that will give you that down. You want something to keep you consistent, especially with your digestive system. Thank you, Lisa. Uh, who's up next on questions? I think, um, Gabby, I think I... So these are specific about other water sources. Um, Anita and Lauren were asking about zero water and Dr. Willard's water, and do you need to replace um, minerals with those two? Have you heard of them? Um, I've heard of Willard's water. I think it's good, and I don't think it takes out the Motri. I haven't heard of the other one. You have to do your own research, and that's what we're going to talk about in week four, how to do your own research. So research, I, the only one I know for sure that takes it out is, is uh, reverse osmosis. I, you can check on zero water, find out if it is a reverse osmosis, reverse osmosis system or not so you have to check i don't know anybody else know on zero water you can raise your hand if you happen to know about it but otherwise do your own research that's the answer A question from amanda how often did kim do ozone therapy and hyperbaric chamber i i think i answered the ozone one already um and there's a lot of a whole bunch of information on our website on a, a, a whole tab. He did hyperbarics, oh, he probably done seven or 800 the first two or three years. Hyperbarics has to be done in a series of like 40 dives, about an hour to an hour and a half per dive at time in the hyperbaric chamber. Um, and and they have, 
it, I mean, if you do four or five dives and then you don't do any for a while, you lose all the benefits. So it takes 35 to 40 dives to have a benefit. Kim does not feel like the hyperbarics is something that's necessary for every pals. That's why in 2017, he bought an EWAT system, exercise bike, and you fill up a big bag with oxygen and he climbs on and he exercises. So in the hyperbaric chamber, he's just lying there. And it did help Kim because he had a welding shop, the welding smoke had come up into his lungs. And that's the reason he was having such severe breathing problems. And the hyperbaric chamber was the only place he could breathe. He hadn't been able to breathe for over a year. Um, but he feels like overall benefit that the EWAT is important. Now, when you exercise, you're burning out toxins. That's a good thing. But if you leave them on your skin, they reabsorb. You also burn out your magnesium. So it's important to take before you do something like EWAT, which is on our website. Um, you need to take like a half a teaspoon of baking soda and some magnesium so that you have an extra supply of those. And that those two things help drive the oxygen into the cells from what we've read. Okay. This one's from Stormy who asks, what would be an, what would be an example of a mild, mild versus severe detox symptom? Um, Kim called me one day. There's one time he did have what we might, might've been a, Herkimer's reaction. We had a friend come over and getting a real severe, a real intense foot rub. And the next morning he called me and said, I don't feel very good. And so I talked to another friend in the area and she says, uh, it's probably just a reaction to that intense uh, olive oil foot therapy, drink a lot of water. But that, other than that, he's never had a reaction, a, a detox reaction. And you, you got will kind of tell you, your intuition is saying, oh, this is working and I can feel it. And I, you know, maybe a mild headache, maybe mild, you don't have quite as much energy, that kind of thing. Uh, more than that, you need to slow it down. Mm -hmm. You need to slow down your detox reaction. You, you need to slow down whatever it was that caused it uh, because you're taking too much. And if it gets worse, and if, if it, you have this major reaction, just stop right away. Something. We knew a gal in uh, uh, Southern California, and Tish has met her also. Can't remember her name now. Um, and she would go to get an IV chelation, and she would feel awful afterwards, and she'd do ozone and had no reaction. So, um, you know, how you, uh, and I have heard that an IV chelation can be very dangerous because you're pulling too many toxins through a liver that can't handle all those times. Right, and we're gonna talk about liver health next time. So if we can just, we only have about, I'd like to finish up in about six minutes, finish the questions in six minutes so we can start saying goodbye. And if you could possibly, uh, the detox questions, we can bring them next week. Um, are there any food supplement gut function questions that are left? Yes, it is Maria asks, is oatmeal bad? It's a grain. It's inflammatory. I put one cup of, of oatmeal flakes in my granola. We eat that over a two-week period, and it is gluten-free. Uh, oats don't necessarily have gluten in them, but they're so often processed in a, in a facility that processes wheat. So um, a little, probably okay. A lot, maybe not, because it, it's inflammatory. Great answer. Okay. Uh, Laura had a follow-up question on a, on a previous one. So uh, what Patricia mentioned, caffeine, is it bad for ALS? I think we answered that one already. Yeah, which is that too many. It's just, again, it's bad for the adrenals, right? If you drink too much, um, if you're drinking you know, three cups a day, guaranteed you're burning out your adrenal glands, okay? okay. Um, it doesn't have to be bad for ALS. I think uh, like the woman who was telling me was four, she drinks four ounces a day. I doubt it. Everybody's different. Some people can handle it. Some people can't. Um, it's very acidic, as Kay said. Um, minimize it. Drink okay. what your intuition tells you. Everybody's different. 
Um, as I said, if it's giving you energy, if it's helping you through your day uh, and you're only taking a little bit and you feel better on it, to me, that's your body's intuition saying, this amount is good for me. You know, if you're taking coffee, consider not taking drink green tea because they both are very high in caffeine. Do one or the other. Don't do both. Okay. Okay. This is from James about kombucha. So if kombucha has natural sugars in it, I've also noticed some have added sugar. Does the fermentation make it more suitable for ALS patients to digest, to ingest? I've never tried that one. So does anyone else have a good answer? You don't want to get the sweetened kind. You can get natural kombucha that isn't. And then Carol makes her own. She's actually going to talk about that next week. Um, so again, a li some of them do not, you know, you have to have a tiny bit of sugar to make them, but you don't need a lot of sugar. So you definitely do not want the kombucha teas with added sugar, but okay. that little tiny bit that it takes to, 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 you know, it takes in the fermentation process. There's just a little tiny bit that's required, I believe. So, so kombucha is recommended for ALS. Well, it's recommended, again, to for your gut function. It's a probiotic. It's another way to get a probiotic. If it's causing you problems, don't eat it. You know, have sauerkraut and have other probiotics. Take probiotics uh, for, from a, in a supplement form. So, again, it's just it's one of the possibilities that might help you, put it that way. <laughs> balance your body, balance your gut. I think we're almost through with the questions here. So Karen has one question. Can anyone comment on the GAPS diet? So G-A-P-S, I, I don't know it personally. I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is, no. I don't know what it is either. I, I've heard of it. I just don't remember. I looked it up. I've heard of it. I've looked it up, but I don't know. <laughs> so can't help Can you with say, that. Do you have any questions left there or otherwise you could with unmute and I ask. see a few. Okay, There's go ahead. Um, what is good for constipation? Oh, we're going to talk about that next week. We are okay. absolutely going to, that we're going to talk a lot about poop next week. <laughs> so we'll save that one. Fruits and vegetables. <laughs> oh. Um, and someone was worried about like prune juice having a lot of sugar. If, if, if the sugar comes naturally from fruits, you don't need to worry about it. It's just processed sugars. That would be uh, my reply. One was... I believe the natural fruits will heal your liver, um, but you don't want anything with corn, corn syrup, or anything corn syrup. No corn syrup, no high fructose corn syrup. For some yeah, reason, Kay, we really put bad. those on the slides. <laughs> no corn syrup of any kind, and certainly not high fructose corn syrup. It is disastrous for ALS. I think I missed one uh, question of Natalia. So uh, w which vegetables are really, really good? So w which of the ones are the best one? The best uh, ones to heal this, the, the brain, the sulfur issues in the brain, your sulfur vision, onions, garlic, cabbage, cauliflower, um, Brussels sprouts, if you like them, that's one we need off. We eat all of the others quite regularly. Uh, celery is good. Celery has to be organic. Um, and all the greens are really good. Dark okay. green vegetables, yep. green salads. Thank you. Particular. Okay. Carrots are really Don good. Yeah. Also, even though they're a little bit high in sugar, there's a lot of things that carrots do, and they're good for your liver as well. Mm -hmm. um, this is from Don and Linda. Does honey feed the biofilm? Um, raw honey has a lot of natural enzymes in it, so I think raw raw honey is probably good. I don't know that sugar feeds the biofilm. It's the bacteria that is built. Uh, the biofilm is what's built around the bacteria and viruses to protect themselves. And, and it's the bacteria and viruses that eat those sugars. To, and uh, Yeah, there was a whole article we read recently on honey and how good it was. So the honey has a lot of um, healing properties. Obviously, you don't want to be drinking cups a day, but a little bit of honey um, absolutely seems like that would be a good thing versus a bad thing. And once they once they cook it, they destroy the enzymes. So raw honey is good. Okay. Mm -hmm. and, and just a reminder to everyone that um, Coco Newton goes over detail in those conference recordings on her presentation about diet. 
Okay. Yeah, and very, she did another good. diet presentation on a Sunday. So look up the Sunday recordings uh, for Coco as well. So there's a lot of good stuff um, out there for you to get some of these answers for as well. So good, great questions, though, everyone. Thank you for participating. Um, I think this was a great session. You guys, if you raise your hand, actually, we're going to, I'm, I'm going to unmute everybody and let people uh, just chime in. You can now... Everyone is now muted and you may unmute yourself, please. If you want to say something, unmute yourself, share and say something yeah. and uh, then mute yourself back again. And if you want to raise your hand, we'll actually call on you in order. So we're not, everybody's ta not talking at once. We'll grab the hand raisers first. And, uh, but anyway, did everyone find this helpful? So that's my first yes. question. Yes, very. Yes. My, yeah. my question would be, why, why didn't we start this when Kim was diagnosed? <laughs> we had to do all this work by ourselves. And this is just so amazing of what you and Scott have put together to bring everyone together um, and share. I, I'm, my gratitude goes out to both of you. <laughs> hi, Kay, it's Dita. I just wanted to say hi, and I hope Kim is doing well. Thank you, Dita. Love to you and your Hello, husband. Hello, everyone. Thank you. Hey, Tabitha. Nice to see you. Hey, it was amazing. Tabitha is a star. She is a total star. <laughs> she has been helping so much. Uh, she also, actually, I feel so bad. We did. How many hours did we spend? So Kim and Kay and I spent, what, 10 hours? And I think, Tabitha, you were involved in six of the hours. So she yeah. also helped bring this, put this presentation together. So this takes a lot of work, guys, um, to put these together. Yeah, in, in a, in a, trying but, to you know, it's amazing. amazing. Everything works so well. Oh, thank you so much. It thank was you, a fantastic. everyone. Hey, Smita, how are you? Hi, thank you. Thank you so much, Tish and Scott and Kay, everybody. It was a fantastic session. I loved it. Great. Uh, Cynthia, you unmuted. Do you want to share? Uh, yes, well, I had the question about constipation. I just found out he had an x-ray this week, and they said he's severely constipated. And oh. I didn't know because he has been doing something. So I'm just worried about what to do. Like enemas as as possible. Lisa, really? if you want to share Mark's story, definitely. So right now he's constipated, but certainly um, Lisa Manchester, do you mind sharing your little story about Mark's uh, when he, they said he's, he was impacted. Oof. So um, yeah. He was at the hospital and he had diarrhea before he went. So he thought that he was moving fine. And uh, the doctor came in and said, no, you're, you're impacted. And he was like, what? So yes, they actually took care of that at the hospital. But when we got home to be proactive, we use certain types of supplements to make sure that the bowels are moving. It's very important. That's part of healing the gut to address the gut healing. You also have to address to whatever goes in needs to come out. So you have to keep the train going. So um, there's so great. So she uh, marked in a series of three enemas and that took care of the immediate problem, Cynthia. And okay. then then yeah. next week, we're going to talk about how to be proactive on the, okay. on the pooping. Okay. The, the pooping is part of the gut, but it's also part of the detox. So we just kind of okay. move that part of the presentation That's over true. to the detox portion. So thank you, Lisa, for sharing. And thank you, Cynthia, for your question. Thank you. Thank and you. Tony, Tony Blackman, what is that you're holding up close there to the screen? Can you explain that a little? Okay, so Tony's had problems with constipation. Trust me, it's been a journey of years. But he went to the hospital the other week, and uh, when he was there, they suggested this stuff, lactulose, and you have to buy it over the counter at the pharmacy. But I'm telling you, it's been helping. It's a it, apart. I mean, he does do all the we're doing the organic and all that stuff, but this is a little extra boost. So I give him a little bit in a shot glass, and he has his shot of lactulose. Used to be alcohol, now it's lactulose. <laughs> <laughs> Lactulose, L-A-C-T-U-L-O-S-E. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Lactulose. Lactulose. That's very funny. 
really good. It gives you that extra little bit of help. He was having suppositories every day, every day, sometimes three or four times a day. Now, maybe a few times a month, but this stuff is magical. One other point on this issue. Go right ahead, Bob. Yeah, uh, a good friend of mine had uh, long-term problems with constipation. In fact, would go months without pooping. They even had a nickname for her, Puffin, because her stomach got so big. She went to a, uh, you know, a holistic uh, chiropractor and asked about, uh, what is it, Metamucil. And he said, absolutely not. He said, you get addicted to that stuff. And he said, have a bowl of watermelon. There's nothing like it. Uh, and... And he also pointed out that, uh, you know, when you're in kindergarten, you make these, um, uh, maybe we did years ago, you make these things with white flour and they harden into like rock. Well, if you have white flour, you're going to put something into yourself that is like rock and uh, eliminate white flour and have a lot of fruits and vegetables. It doesn't have to be watermelon, but uh, I'm a vegetarian and that's not been a problem. And in fact, this person I know who had a problem with it and now eats vegetables uh, rarely ever a problem. So I don't know that you need chemicals. Uh, and if you get impacted, I think you need to take uh, measures, obviously. But, uh, uh, you, you know, if you th amount of, the amount of fiber in a big pile of watermelon or any fruit or vegetable uh, will likely solve these problems and you'll daily things will be just fine. If anyone has different, I read a lot of stories about pals that get very constipated later on. And, you know, I may not be far enough in, but that's not been a problem. So I share that uh, little background. Yeah, and thank you for sharing that you're vegetarian. And McFinn, by the way, is vegan and is doing very well. So again, everyone's different. Um, usually type O's need some sort of meat. So we talked about that as well. So thank yeah, you. Yeah, I said I was vegetarian. I decided to cheat once a week. Uh, I have no philosophical or moral or whatever problem about meat. And I decided I would take advantage and have a little bit of meat here and there. So yeah, grass fed 100%. beef, organic chicken, no yes. pork guys. Pork is full of a lot of stuff uh, in general, not, not a great idea. So thank you very much everyone for sharing. Anyone else want to share anything? I see uh, quick, quick question. Do we use the same link for next week or do we sign up again and get a new link? Sign up again with a new link. Thank you. Um, uh, Maria Ortens, did you have a question? And Daphne. Mm -hmm. So Maria first, then Daphne. And Daphne. Excess gas. Does anybody have a lot of excess gas? Gas. We we're gonna. I, that may be advanced boot camp. We're actually looking into right now, we're getting a lot of opinions from a lot of functional MDs right now about the best way to get rid of gas. Um, obviously moving your bowels are, is gonna help. So I think next week is gonna help with that. And then advanced boot camp is gonna, we're gonna cover that a lot more. Yep. Because there's a lot of, like one of the issues I found out recently and I didn't know was fruit. Um, that basically if you eat, suppose you eat a nice, nice meal of vegetables and a little bit of meat. And if you eat fruit right after that can create gas in your body, which means your liver has to detox alcohol. So generally, if you're going to eat fruit, eat it 20 minutes before you start eating or an hour and a half after you start eating. Cause that is one of the causes of gas. So we are in advanced boot camp, We're going to do a whole section on gas because it is an issue it's also a, a sign of low nitrogen and i don't know whether you want to share anything lisa of manchester or not thank you just what i said oh, you have a, robert you have a solution um sorry um can you hear us okay yeah okay um yeah the fruit and vegetable things that the fruits take way less time to digest in your stomach and that's why and the vegetables take a lot longer so that's why you put them together. You end up having the fruit in the stomach a lot longer and it starts to ferment the sugars in the fruit. That's why it causes gas. Right. So that's why you keep the fruits and vegetables separate. Yeah. And definitely the fruits and meats separate. Like yeah. you can get away with a little bit of fruit in your vegetables, but the meats yeah. are, it's a real definite problem. 
Yeah. Uh, and Lisa, did you have any quick suggestions on that, on gas? Just what she was saying. That's what I was going to say. If you have fruit, you eat it, wait 20 minutes, then have whatever else, uh, vegetables, proteins, and so forth. Yeah, um, and then if you have eaten, have something to eat, vegetables, proteins, and so forth, you need to wait an hour and a half before you have the fruit. Um, and uh, digestive enzymes are very important to help you digest whatever you're having, fruits, vegetables, proteins, whatever, to break it down. Yeah, and I'm wondering, we're talking about LEAP again, why is it that Mark responded so well to LEAP? He is taking a lot of probiotics and a lot of digestive enzymes. And so, you know, and he had done a bunch of detox. So his, you know, his, he's able to absorb the LEAP. So I think that's, I think that's an important piece of it. Yeah. And okay. like it's 256, we need to start saying goodbye. So go ahead, Tony, if you want to say bye real quick. Okay. Good job, y'all. It was really great. Very good information today. I, I'd just like to say about gas, massage of your belly can help with the moment that you have the gas. Okay. Yes. And knowing how to massage in the right direction and where okay. to start is very important too. You just don't get there and start doing a belly rub. Right. So from yes. Right to okay. So Kath, uh, Scott, do you want to start with your goodbyes? Well, I want to thank everybody for being here for week one of boot camp. This is good. We're just going to get into more and more detail as we continue forward. You guys have done a great job. Thank you for your help, Marcel. And thank you for your help, Gabby Faye. Thank you a lot, Kay, for all that vast of information that you've given us. And everybody, I just want to say bye-bye. I hope to see you next week. Okay? So bye-bye, Jen and Michelle. Bye -bye. Thank you, Patricia. Thank you so much. Thank you. And Judith and bye. Lorraine. Bye-bye over there, Lorraine. Bye-bye, Anita. Bye-bye. <laughs> bye-bye, Judith. Thank and you. All right. Okay, bye-bye, David and Mary. And yeah, David Mary over there. Great. Bye-bye. We'll see you, Gary. We'll see you, Nicola. Bye-bye. We'll see you, Sandy.